So, um, hi, my name is Charles, Charles Brennan. I'm the editor of the International Journal of Food Science and Technology. And today I'm here with uh, Dr. Judy Allo and Dr. Lisa Newman. Hi. Hi, Charles. Hello. <laughs> what I want to do is just explore one of your recent uh, papers in IGFST. So this was in uh, last year, I think, uh, maybe the September or August issue of IGFST looking at understanding the barriers of sensory evaluation in children and seeing sort of what really appeals to their sensory evaluation. And, and we've had children, or my, I've had children myself, and I understand that that's a real issue. So in terms of the actual paper, can you tell me a little bit about, let's say, sensory evaluation and, and where sensory evaluation features in this research? Yeah, sure. So um, I guess we are interested in um, children's eating behaviours um, and I guess in particular fussy eating and food neophobia in small children, kindergarten age children, which is really, really prevalent um, and is shown by the real lack of um, fruit and vegetables that are consumed by Australian uh, children. And so what we um, wanted to investigate is to look at whether we could use uh, sensory play, which is a form of um, using our senses, uh, um, our sight, our touch, our hearing, um, and our taste to um, use that in a fun way um, to engage the children uh, with with food essentially. So sensory play has been used a lot in the past with children um, not using real foods, um, just using pretend foods or other items um, and we were really interested in using it with real foods uh, to see if it could um, increase their willingness to try foods and get and I guess reduce the fussy eating. Fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So you use the word sensory play. Um, what it, what inspired you in this research? Um, how did you kick it off? <laughs> it's actually quite random. So <laughs> because Lisa and I we have a lot of teams meeting where we just talk about research and what we are doing. So was this over COVID then? Uh, yes, I guess. <laughs> and we are very supportive of each other. So, um, so I was telling her about, I was looking at Instagram and I also have a friend that's also an early childhood educator and she was telling me about sensory play and I've never heard about this word sensory play because I've got no children. So I asked her that just came back from mat leave and she was telling me all about it. So we were like, so we started looking at the sensory play items and we realized that a lot of them do not include real foods and we were thinking can we use real foods instead and have them play and that's how we kick started this idea really. So can you explain some practical steps that we can employ as parents but also mm -hmm. in terms of food scientists to use sensory play in our research and also in our home life? Yeah, definitely. So um, I guess the first thing that we could try and do is just to involve the children when you're preparing food, essentially. Let them touch things, let them not necessarily play with it, but if you're cooking dinner or something, let them touch it and interact with, with the foods. Um, and then slowly you could start incorporating it into, into play as well. So um, I guess a lot of the, uh, the activities that um, we have in uh, that we do within our research um, involve using those real foods to um, I guess do sort of fun activities so for instance some of the activities that we've done have been um, putting dry seafood into um, water bottles and watching it um, you know open up and then putting sea creatures in there and letting the kids um, play with it or having some um, brown rice um, and creating that as like the um, the ground for the farm and then getting some toy farmers and you know shoveling and planting some seeds and and those sort of things so it can be really basic back to just getting them involved in food preparation and touching and feeling those things all the way to you know doing full scenarios but I think the important thing is kids are so creative and um, use their imagination so much that just sort of let them roll with it and um, and see where it takes you basically. Usually it's a little bit messy, but that's part of the fun of it as well. <laughs> so I can see that we can use this, you know, day to day 
experience. But in terms of research, you know, where, where do you see this going? How, how could you employ these techniques? Because they sound fantastic. Um, well, so we did, um, after writing this review, so we also kick-started by doing a pilot study in um, a kindergarten. So we just tried to see, can we create different types of design of play using different types of sustainable foods to see if children are willing to eat them after play. So we tried it out in a kinder setting and then later on we are currently working on a trial which we are aiming for 300 parents to work on a kit at home to see if children are willing to eat them or how much are they willing to eat after playing with their parents at home through their day-to-day -day life. So the way we see it, it can be applied for sustainable food eating behavior. Probably a lot of older adults are currently also not, um, they complain about their foods, not liking the texture in particular. So we really want to explore if we can play with texture and see if that can impact on acceptance later on in life. So, for us in, in sort of, not a sensory analysis person, for us in, in the research community, what take home message would you have from your paper? And, and where do you see you know, us going forwards in, in helping get that sort of area of sensory evaluation and food innovation? Um, so I guess our key message is to play with your food. Okay, I like that. <laughs> um, and I have gone blank with what I was going to say. <laughs> Um, uh, yes, um, and there's been lots of previous interventions, like we said earlier, that have uh, used sensory play but without food essentially. So the next step is to really try and implement different food sources um, to see if playing with the food does increase their willingness to uh, to try those foods. So um, I think, yeah, that's the most important thing that we can take home is just trying to um, get the children involved as much as possible with touching and feeling and using their senses um, in an environment um, that is fun. So um, hopefully in turn, they will be more willing to actually try and eat those foods because uh, as we know, um, the fruit and vegetable intake of children is very, very low at the moment, um, or meeting the recommendations, I should say, is very low. So uh, making sure that we can engage them in a way um, where they want to try and eat those foods um, and then in turn, hopefully improve their health over the long term um, is, I guess, really important. Cool. So, Dr. Julia Lowe, uh, Dr. Lisa Newman, thank you very much for explaining your paper. I'll um, put a link onto the, the paper after this so that you can um, look at that and follow the research. But we look forward to more papers coming through. So thank you very much this morning. And let's enjoy our coffees. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>